Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Another POV video today. We're using the M50 Mark II. And fun fact, well this isn't fun at all, it's extremely boring. <laughs> this is exactly the same, like exterior, same buttons, same size, same shape. It's exactly the same as the Mark I. There is absolutely no physical differences, except for it being newer, so there's probably less scratches on it. <laughs> uh, but today, we're gonna put it through its paces with some street photography. We're not gonna complicate things. Yeah, we're just gonna do some pretty typical street photography with the M50 Mark II. Now we we are using the kit lens on the M50, which is a 15 to 45 mil, and the M50 is cropped as well, so 15 is about 20 mil, 22 mil. That's enough of me rambling. Let's get on with the video and shoot some uh, shoot some street stuff. So we are now underneath the Millennium Bridge, which is just above me, and then St Paul's is just over here. You might might be a good little shot here of, St, of the, just the top of St Paul's. Let's go all the way at 45. We love a leading line here, don't we? That guy looks kind of cool. This guy actually makes quite a good subject because of his yellow coat, stands out. But the grey sky is making a horrible backdrop because everything just feels like it's overexposed. So the difficulty here is to take photos of St Paul's in a creative way that you've probably not seen before. But the thing is, everyone's taking photos of St Paul's, so it's hard to be creative. So I think let's just, let's just take some classic shots and not overthink this at all. See what the M50 can do for us. That's nice, even though it's a bit dark and hopefully I can edit it and recover it, but... What is that? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Pun central here. Yeah, we're gonna try use these gold letters to see if we can make St Paul's look a little bit more interesting. Probably not though, that's my guess. <laughs> this is very random. I'm thinking the A, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, actually, not horrendous. Not horrendous, boom. What about the curve on the T here? Let's see what we can do. Boom. Meh, that's what I think to that. Let's go for an F stop at 3.5. It's super chill. Most casual photo ever, I think. Just enjoying his book, isn't he? Let's bump that F stop. Let's go to aperture of 11 so everything's in focus. Drop the shutter speed down. 160, that's kind of cool, perfectly exposed. On the shard, boom. This railing looks kind of nice. Simple reflection in there. Nice and easy. Quick little portrait, Sam. Just stand by there as if you're observing the poo coloured water. F4.5. Hey, this is kind of cool. I don't know if you wanted like a LinkedIn profile picture to show that you're adventurous or something. <laughs> oh no. Okay, back to the shard. <laughs> turn, turn away. <laughs> oh, it's kind of nice actually. Hold that. The shard's too big. Right, let's get that. That's all right. Oh, there we go. Like the casual, like, <laughs> tourist image, isn't it? It is, yeah. Like, woohoo, first time Especially in London. <laughs> Another easy shard shot right here. It's where you can use the railing and the bridge to create a really simple frame. We're using the kit lens, so we're shooting at 24 mil. Actually, let's, let's zoom out a little bit. Boom, nice and simple. Let's get further, this guy. Let's go F3.5. We're zoom all the way into 45. Let's get some detailed texture shots. Personally, I'm a fan of stuff like this. You might be watching this thinking, what the hell is Mike doing? Very pointless. You know, I just like a bit of architecture sometimes. ISO 200, nice and simple. Underexposed a little bit, actually. Let's drop, let's drop the F-stop down to eight, I think will probably be good enough. So we get a reflection in there. Nice, that's okay. I've just found this nice little corridor, some really nice symmetry here. All of a sudden got really busy. Yeah, I get a couple of you actually. I use you as the subject. Yeah, I'll walk with you. It's like a really, really simple leading line. What are they? <laughs> why? What and why are they 
do they exist? Cool, so we are now behind St Paul's. Nice corridor of buildings basically and a nice little walkway. This might provide some pretty casual, half decent architecture shots like this one, for example. Actually, no, it's a bit overexposed. F stop to about eight. That's like a good rule of thumb to make sure you get a lot of a lot of the frame in focus. Uh, ISO about 200, shutter speed at what, 160? That's fine, yeah. Bump the, bump the ISO actually to 320. Forget how wide the kit lens is with the M50. With that being said, let's bump the shutter speed up to 250. Boom. I should get a bit closer. I'll go again from here. The walls around us are making this look pretty dark, which I quite like actually. It's kind of cool. Let's get a bit closer as well, I think. Uh, cloudy days in London, not good for photography, but that will have to do for now. Right, let's keep going. Not entirely sure where we are, but these glass buildings will make for a sexy look-up shot. Probably, maybe, I don't know. Well, we're gonna try it anyway, because no harm in trying. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's actually not bad. Hate the sky today, but it will have to do. This looks sick. <laughs> this looks dramatic. It's giving me Gotham vibes or something. Mm -hmm. On the side, wow, no this is so weird. Why is the entire side of a building just black? It's kind of all right. What's he doing? He's on the floor. Put your feet in the air as well. <laughs> Check out what Sam just took on his phone. Jeesh. Museum of London, like that roundabout where the Museum of London is, that's right next to us. So if you are interested to know where we are, Museum of London is there, matte black crazy looking buildings here. Using the M50's 15 to 45 kit lens actually does a good job of getting some wide, wide angle shots. And for a decent look up shot, you need a wide angle lens really. Oh, banger of the day. Starting to feel good about today's photos actually, because I didn't think I was really getting anything that good, but this little spot, what a find. This is nice. Loving the textures on the buildings as well. Let's crop in. Ooh, love shots like that. So simple, kind of a bit pointless, but. So if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I have, a, I have a friend called Pete Jobson who likes taking photos of rubbish. So this photo right here is a tribute to the boy. Photo of the rubbish, three, two, one. There you go, Pete. If you see this video, I hope you like that. There's literally a rubbish photo of some rubbish. Shout out Pete Jobson. So we are on the way to the Barbican Centre, which is just a crazy area in general. On the way there, we found this street. Now, not only have you got the path and these buildings act as like a leading line through to the background where this huge Barbican block of flats is. If it is a block of flats, I think it is. Um, so there's an opportunity here to use these layers to just get a really nice looking shot. And I think this actually looks pretty sick. So we're gonna go ISO 100, drop the shutter speed down, one, two, five probably, just to avoid any any handheld shake, oh, 100's fine. Aperture eight, to make sure we get quite a bit in focus. Maybe even a bit more aperture. Yeah, actually 7.1, quite a simple shot. Tap on the screen to focus in the background. Three, two, one, nice. And then we're gonna get one more, punched in a little bit more to emphasize, to get a bit more detail on the building in the background. Easy as that. Cool. <laughs> And here he is, scoffing his face. Let's get a portrait of you just... <laughs> wait, 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 I'm not quick enough. Three, two... <laughs> there we go, new profile picture. Yeah, so we're around here, just a nice simple portrait. Let's get a bit closer. Yeah, let's get one. Yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, they're all right. If you wanted photos like that. <laughs> You can see I'm going to take a photo, but I'm going to, you know, have the sky in it. Boom, which looks horrible because the sky is just white and grey. And I'm going to get a little bit closer, punch into about 45 mil and take a photo without the sky. And you'll just see how much better this photo is in general. Boom. I don't know. I just prefer that so much more. It's just, just an air of mystery about it because you don't actually know how big it is or where it is or what angle I'm at. It's just a bit, a bit more misleading because you can't see the sky basically is what I'm saying. Am I just, I'm just chatting a lot of shit right now, aren't I? Just ignore me. So I will admit I'm a bit slow using 
using this camera to try and get photos because I'm used to using the R6 and the R6 has got dials and wheels and scrollers and buttons everywhere to change all the settings. Whereas this, I mean, I'm sure it, I mean, I'm sure it does and you'd get used to it, but um, I'm having to use the touch screen to change all my settings because I don't actually know my way around the camera that well, but that, that comes with time. So don't let that, don't, but then let that put you off buying it because you think it's hard to use. It definitely isn't. This is definitely a perfect camera for anyone starting, getting started with photography or even YouTube in general. There's a lot of good video features, um, especially for the price. Talking about the video features and the filming and stuff, I'll probably cover all that in a different video. Let's uh, let's stick to stick to photography for today. That looks sick. I think I've got to get a photo of you. You're just not bothered about heights, are you? 20 foot drop behind you. <laughs> just move forward a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Just want to get you in that gap. Do it. Let's get a really cheesy photo. Put your camera in the sky. Woohoo! <laughs> that was cheese on toast. <laughs> yeah, that was proper cringe. But you can see why. Do we do a bit more? Do we do a bit more? <laughs> Let's pretend we're shooting a photo for a film and we need a poster. Three, two, one, boom, boom. Let's take a few more. I'm going to punch in a little bit. Boom. There we go. So you look like a superhero, but, but Dr. No. Cannon. <laughs> Optical Wonder is quite a superhero name. Yeah. How depressing the sky is. Just trying to get someone in the frame that are oh, these guys gonna be these are absolutely fantastic. Three, two, bam. Uh, some back. nice images there. I'll get that. Yeah, cool. So me and Sam are going to get a long exposure train arriving. I'm going to go 1 15th of a second. It's exposed really well. ISO of 640. Maybe you just stand. Yeah, yeah. And stay still. So yeah. clean as well. Look at that. I don't know what the, why is the lighting in this underground so I know. I like how parallel this is as well. Oh, go on, then. quick one. Quick one of the lines. Simple one. Boom. Let's go horizontal as well. This is funny, like, if I look at what's this, right? If I horizontal it. Show me this one. And then, ready? Oh, that was so good. I just got the best. <laughs> I've just got my new favorite photo of all time. He's uh, like, that's sick, man. Because you're like, show me. Do you, is it on as well? Yeah, I'm filming. <laughs> what a beauty. Yes. So as I took a photo, just to recap what happened, I took a photo of all the lines and the symmetry and the, all these escalators. A guy noticed that I was taking a photo and I had the camera ready for him to walk into frame, or should I say stand into frame, because the escalator was moving. And I put it on screen. But he was, he was kind of looking at us going, show me the photo. That's sick, man. That's Beautiful awesome. shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a lovely little spot. The shapes in the background. 